and this is from Politico, and this is their reporting uh, on the topic. Marianne Williamson's abusive treatment of 2020 campaign staff revealed. Now, like I said earlier, the ruling class is known to put out hit pieces. And they did this to Shahid Batar. They did this to Shahid Batar, accused of staff abuse. Yeah. They did this to him, not staff abuse, but they accused him of something. And um, so the tactic is always used. Uh, so. Again, we are, as at least I am, reading this as a information we should know, but understand how the ruling class works. We, we as revolutionists have to be able to, uh, it's not really walking the line because it's not hard to walk, but we have to acknowledge uh, both things. And that's what we need to do. So we're reading this for information. If this turns out to be accurate and true and there's no sort of ruling class behind it to push this information, then this is terrible. Um, and if this is the ruling class somehow, you know, getting a hold of some people and pressuring them to give a particular story, that's possible, too. And don't think that they're, they wouldn't do that. Bernie Sanders started winning primaries. All of a sudden, he was a Russian agent. So I'm not saying she's on that level because I don't think she is. But understand the ruling class does things like that. So let's let's uh, read through this article. Um, accused of staff abuse. Now, um, now, if any of you now see, I didn't know. I just literally found out who Marianne Williamson was early two thousand in two thousand and twenty-two. I don't recall her running for some reason in twenty twenty. She was she had that less of effect of me on me, and I think she appeared in one debate, and that was a debate that I didn't watch. So that you know, weirder things could have happened. Um, but let's. Let's read this article and uh, let me blow this up. We'll read actually a couple of articles here. I think I think I got it pretty huge. Let's do this to make it even bigger, and we'll take this off here. All right, so let's read the self-help guru is who is running for president again was emotionally and verbally abusive to staff, according to uh, interviews with former employees. In her year, I'm sorry, in her year long candidacy, Marianne Williamson burned through two campaign managers, multiple state directors, field organizers and volunteers. I, uh, Jose Lewis, Magana, AP, okay, that's, that's his, uh, not I, that's his, uh, the reporter, sorry. So, this was the question I was going to ask right before I started to read the, the, the article, and I was like, oh, let me read the article first. Is that, is this a pattern, like, has this happened in previous, because her first candidacy of running for any office was not in 2020. I don't know if a lot of people don't know, she ran either for state rep or senator or something like that, she also ran for that too. Um, in 2014 or whenever it was, 15, whenever that was, she ran for something else. But let's um, continue to read and see what uh, this is by Lauren Egan. I think that's how you say it. And this is from today. The best selling, oops. The best selling author, Marianne Williamson, has built a career. Preaching love and forgiveness. It is the cornerstone of her second. There we go. 
it is the cornerstone of her second de Democratic campaign for president, which she launched on March 4th. But those who have worked with Williamson has, as she has moved into the political realm, say her public persona is at odds with her private behavior. Interviews with 12 people who worked for Williamson during her 2020 presidential campaign paint a picture of a boss who can be verbally and emotionally abusive. Those interviews say the best-selling author and spiritual lead leader subjected her employees to unpredictable, explosive episodes of anger. They say Williamson could be cruel and demeaning to her staff and that her behavior went far beyond the typical stress of grueling presidential cycles. So we're saying, uh, you know, normal presidential cycles. There's, there's this that goes on. There's a lot of pressure. There's no sleep. You know, there's a lot of things to do. There's always not enough people in time to get it done. But they're saying, no, 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 no. We get that. There was more. Here's a quote. It would be fo it would be foaming, spitting, uncontrollable rage, end quote, said a former staffer who, like most people that spoke with Politico, was granted anim anonymity because of their concern about being sued for breaking non-disclosure agreements. Quote, it was traumatic and the experience in the end was terrifying, end quote. So these, these are all sources that are not named so far in the article. Williamson would throw her phone at staffers according to three of those former staffers. That's a lot. I would say, if true, that's going above and beyond the normal stresses of a campaign. Um, I would think, uh, I would hope. So let me read this here. This is propaganda. And that's why, it, Alex, I hope you were here earlier, that I prefaced this, this part of this segment or this new segment with that, that this could be a hit piece similar to what they did with Shahid Bratar, or this could be real. So we as revolutionists living in a crumbling capitalist empire have to understand with all the contradictions, we have to be able to um, understand both can be true. I'm not, not both that can be true, that uh, uh, these could be true, yeah, I guess I said it right. That both can be true, but not true at the same time. Like, it, it could be that these are actual allegations that are true, and there's no state uh, uh, government person behind it. Or it could just be that there, this is a hit piece that some government agency, somebody working for the government on behalf of the government has got this going. So it could be either one. And we acknowledge that before the reading of this article. So uh, this is big, though. Williamson would throw her phone at staffers, according to three of those former staffers. Her outburst could be so loud that two former aides recounted at least four occasions when hotel staff knocked on her door to check on the situation. Meaning that it was so bad in there, so much commotion, we had to knock on the door and say, hey, is everything okay? Now, in one instance, Williamson got so angry about the logistics of a campaign trip to South Carolina that she felt that she felt was poorly planned that she pounded on a car door. And she's talking about Marianne Williamson herself pounded on a car door or the article is saying I said she. She pounded on a car door until her hand started to swell, according to four former staffers. Ultimately. She had to go to an emer uh, urgent care facility, they said. All 12 former staffers interviewed recalled instances where Williamson would scream 
at people until they started crying. When presented with details of Politico's reporting, Paul Hodes, I think that's how you say it, Hodes, a former U.S. congressman who served as Williamson's 2020 uh, New Hampshire state director. Wow. So this is a name source here. Paul, Paul Hodes. Um, Hoods, maybe that's it. Paul Hoods, um, a former U.S. congressman who served as Williamson's 2020 New, New Hampshire state director, said such descriptions mirrored his own experience working with her. Now, let's pause here. So 12 anonymous staffers do all this reporting. You might say, uh, anonymous, not a single person is willing to go on record. Uh, I don't know about that. This could actually just be a CIA planet story that political is acting like they have to it. Um, now, they take what those 12 people said, political does, political does, and go to Paul Hudds, a former U.S. congressman who was Williamson's uh, New Hampshire state director, and says, oh, that sounds about right. Now, you know, let's continue. And here's the quote from quote from him. Quote, those reports of Miss Williamson's behavior are consistent with my observations, consistent with the contemporaneous discussions I had. So they're basically saying, we got evidence that show at the time it was happening, we talked about this. Consistent with contemporaneous discussion I had about her conduct with staff members and extremely, I'm sorry, entirely consistent with my own personal experience with her behavior on multiple occasions. In an email to Politico, Williamson said such accusations of her of her behavior. I'm sorry. So let's go back. So, so of course, with any not with, not with any, but um, they reach out. Politico reaches out to Williamson to say, "Hey, we have this report. This is what it says. This is what it's about. These are the sources. Blah blah blah. Do you have a comment?" And in an email, this is her comment. In an email to Politico, Williamson said, such accusations of her behavior are slanderous and categorically untrue. Quote, former staffers, and I believe, hold on a second. This is Marianne Williamson talking. I just want to make sure I'm keeping it right. Quote, former staffers trying to score points with the political establishment by smearing me might be good for their career. So let me stop here. So she, so this is another avenue. Maybe she's saying they could just be wanting to, because they want to be in the Democratic establishment. Understand, these aren't Green Party people. These are Democrats. So in order to score points, they wanted to be, you know, as, but if they're not sourced, how are they scoring points? Like if their names aren't sourced besides the one person, but I'm talking about the 12 to 12 staffers. Let's read the quote again. Quote, former staffers trying to score points with the political establishment by smearing me might be good for their careers, but the intention is to deflect attention from the important issues facing the American people, she said. She goes on to continue, quote, this presidential campaign expects con concerted efforts to dismiss and denigrate us, but the amplification of outright lies should not occur, end quote. In the same email, Williamson denied ever throwing a phone at a staffer, but she did acknowledge that she went to urgent care after getting upset and hitting her hand on a car door, 
but said a car door is not a person, I would never be physically hurtful to a person. She also acknowledged that there was an occasion when she raised her voice in a hotel room and someone came to see what happened. You see how she's giving, she's acknowledging parts where there can be physical evidence, a receipt, a, you know, receipt that you're going to an urgent care can be looked up. Um, you going a hotel saying having record of them having to go to your room because of noise. All of that can be on record. And that seems to be what she's having to acknowledge here. She also acknowledged, hold on, I read that part, okay. Here's a quote from her. Quote, I find it hard to believe that people in politics have never raised their voice before, end quote, she said. Former Stafford interviewed noted that tough boss criticism tend to unfairly be lobbed at female leaders. And let's read that again. Former staffers interview noted that tough bosses, tough boss criticisms tend to be unfairly lobbed at female. That's true. That is true. So like, um, let's say a man is just like this. The woman will be, or more likely will be criticized for having the same behavior because some people feel like a man, that's just a man being a man. So I do, I do agree with that particular part there. But they also stress that Williamson's behavior was beyond the boundaries of acceptable regardless of her gender. Although Williamson has little shot at defeating President Joe Biden in the 2024 Democratic presidential primary, they said they were motivated to come forward now to warn people who would be who were considering working on her campaign about her treatment of staff. Well, now she's going to have to treat them better because of this. Uh, even if I mean, if it's true, uh, she has to treat them better. Um, I mean, she's on she's. She's been put on notice that eyes are on her with this article. So, uh, under this caption here, it says to this picture, it says, at one point in 2019, Marianne Williamson suggested monitoring staffers' phones, according to one of her former staffers, but never followed through with the idea. It's thrown out. Those former aides said Williamson's behavior was hard to predict. She berated, she berated staffers for seemingly inconsequential things, like if they booked a hotel room that had a walk-in shower and not a bathtub, they said. She would tell her staff to cancel an event only to change her mind a day later and accuse them of trying to undermine her campaign. She obsessed over the physical appearance of others and ridiculed staffers for being overweight, according to four former staffers. Williamson says she never mocked anyone for weight. Quote, she would get caught in these vicious emotional loops where she would yell and scream hysterically, said a second former staffer. Quote, this was day after day after day. It wasn't that she was having a bad day or moment. It was just boom, 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 and often for a no, and often for no legitimate reason. End quote. In her year-long candidacy, Williamson burned through two campaign managers, multiple state directors, field uh, organizers, and volunteers. Some were let go, but others said they quit because of the campaign culture. Wow. Um, there's a lot here. There is a lot here. And, um, yeah. That's what Savvy said in the conversation about this. Arnold was like, Savvy was like, man, there's a lot of fucking accusations in here. Um, let's read. In a resignation email sent to Williamson on August 14, 2019, 
Robert Becker, the campaign's then Iowa State director, wrote director wrote that Williamson's treatment of staffs was belittling, abusive, and dehumanizing and an unacceptable. End quote. According to a copy of the email exchange with Williamson obtained by Politico, Becker, who was a comp- controversial hire due to the prior allegations he forcibly kissed a subordinate while working on Bernie Sanders' 2016 presidential campaign, added, quote, I could not in good faith uh, subject any future campaign hires to this kind of vitriol. For 30 years, I have had zero tolerance for bullying in the workplace, and that has to include, and that has to include the principal. Um, and I'm thinking he's saying the principal, meaning Marianne Williamson, meaning the, the main person. Williamson's email back, quote, I did not go on a limb for you, but more importantly, I had no idea that you would have seen me that way. Hopefully I will learn from what you have said. And hopefully you will not say such things to others. Wait, what? Wait, what? This is a funny way of speaking. Hopefully, I will learn from what you have said. Why wouldn't you say, I will learn? Why are you saying, I don't know if I'm going to learn from that shit. And then... It's... And and hopefully, you will... not say such things to others, meaning don't bring this up. She didn't say, don't say these untrue things to others, or none of this is true. It's hopefully I will learn from what you have said, and hopefully you will not say such things to others. That's that's curious, man. That's 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 curious there. That's I'm trying to be fair-minded that this could be possibly a hit piece, but if there's an email where this is the exchange, uh, Becker did not respond to Politico's multiple requests for comment. Politico authenticated the email with former Williamson staffer. Williamson feared that her staffer would go behind her back and talk to reporters about her re- her behavior. According to six former staffers who said she required campaign employees to sign non-disclosure agreements and made clear that they would be strictly enforced. At one point in 2019, she suggested monitoring staffers' phones, according to one of them, but never followed through with the idea. Williamson denied that she ever uh, suggested doing such a thing. Wow. Quote, the message was, don't fuck with me because I will make your life a living hell so no one fuck with her, said a third former staffer. Campaigns often use NDAs to protect proprietary information from spilling out into the public. But former aides said Williamson's use use of the NDAs went beyond just her full-time campaign staff. Those aides said that Williamson's personal assistant traveled with NDAs readily available and would ask taxi drivers and other service industry workers to sign them if, if Williamson lost her temper in front of them. Williamson denied this charge too. However, two former staffers said they witnessed this happen on separate occasions after Williamson started berating staff in cabs to and from fundraisers and media events in New York. Wow. This is a lot. This is a lot. Um... What are we thinking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. NDA should not cover abuse. I agree. What are we thinking in a, in the chat? Are, are we thinking? Uh, let's answer this question from five. 
16 p.m. Eastern and on. So if you come in a comment after that, 16, 5, 16. What are we thinking as far as this story so far? What are your thoughts? And again, comments from 515 have the timestamp 516, 16, 5, 16 Eastern PM. Let's see what they say. Let's see what you say. I'm sorry. Um, here's the first comment. Marianne looked like she has a secret murder. <laughs> All right. Let me see if I may have to screen some of these. Did she give the cabbies an extra large tip at least? I oops, I guarantee her words were slurred. Sorry, boring story. Spaghetti now, you're talking. I'm hungry. Going for breaky later, comrades. Let's go to this one. Mika. Legally, I don't think NDAs can cover abuse. Yeah, like an NDA couldn't cover murder or something like that. An NDA can't supersede a law or something. Marianne Williamson was definitely presidential material. Are you saying that based on uh, this article? Um, we're at 550 pe 450 people. Hit that like button, everybody. I'm reading this article. This is interesting. Let's get some more people in here. Hit that like button. Let's get to 425 likes. 425. Thank you. Quote, there was a period after the campaign ended where there was intense drama, uh, uh, or trauma, I'm sorry, trauma bonding. Trauma bonding, meaning bonding with each other over trauma, said a fourth former staffer. It was like, what the fuck did, sh did we just go through? Campaign staff had conversations amongst themselves about how to approach Williamson's about seeking help for her behavior. But most said they thought it would be an uphill battle given Williamson's track record of, skeptic of skepticism surrounding mental health and antidepressants. Many said they felt like there was no way to talk to Williamson about such sensitive topics without openly, without opening themselves up to her verbal attacks. Quote, her perspective on the pharmaceutical industry, those points of views informed her personal actions, actions and not getting medication and help that she needed, said the second former A. I thought she was all about that. Isn't that what her whole thing? I don't know about what is I thought she was a guru about getting help. Is that mean not like self anyway, let me let me stick to the article. While Williamson's behavior during the 2020 campaign had never previously been reported, it mirror, mirrors reporting from 30 years ago when Williamson's popularity as a spiritual guru taking off among major Hollywood celebrities following the publication of her first book, A Return to Love. A 1992 magazine story profiling Williamson said she had a temper and unchecked ego as well as a cruelly abrasive management style. And quoted a former associate who called Williamson a tyrant. A Los Angeles Times story published the same year and that year is uh, 1992, uh, reported that people who had worked with Williamson described her as having, quote, an explosive temper that erupts indiscriminately, end quote. Still, her behavior came as, shock, as a shock to most of her 2020 campaign staff, the majority of whom had backgrounds working in politics and only knew of Williamson through her best-selling books, and public speaking events encouraging people to harness the power of love and learn to forgive. Wow, this is, um, this is a lot. Uh, and it comes to an end here, but, wow, um, what I can say, um, I mean, it, it, there in in a hit piece, there could be elements of truth. 
like the email, like there's no way to dispute what was said in an email. Um, so that was that would be problematic. Uh, so I'm trying to be fair and balanced in his because I don't know this is necessarily a hit piece. I'm I'm wanting to hear uh, more information, but the 1992 uh, People Magazine article with some of the same sort of descriptions of her behavior. Um, I guess it could be something. 